Okay, so let's talk about passing more complex data between your front end and back end, the server side. So first, let me just simplify this a little bit. So I'm going to get rid of this. So we have our get data, we have our get number, we have our do get. So our do get simply loads this index HTML for our web app. We have this get data function, which simply gets the value in A1 cell in the sheet one, which is going to be this. It says Apple currently. And then we have this get number, which gets the value in B1 cell, which is going to be this 45. Let me get rid of this for now. So pretty simple. We just get the value from here. We get the value from here in these two functions. Now for now, I'll just go to my front end and I'll just get rid of pretty much everything I got here. And finally, I will want to have this function someplace. So I'll just create that. And simply just move this over here. So if I wanted to, for example, run this function, get data, that would look like this. So we're going to run this function, get data with this Google script run. And if it's successful, we're going to get this data back. And this data at that point would be whatever we get as a return from this, which is the value in a one cell. Now I did talk about in previous videos, how we can run two functions at the same time and go get the data. But what if I just wanted to just return all the data from both of these cells at the same time with this function. So instead of having this get number function, maybe I'll just go grab that information in this function right away. Let's just create that really quickly. So first I'm just going to create a constant for a spreadsheet, move this over here, and then we'll get our worksheet and we'll take our spreadsheet and get sheet by name. Pretty much what we got here, right? And then once we get that, then we can from that worksheet get range a one and get the value. So I'll just save this and call this one product. And then I'll do another one here. We'll do QTY for quantity. And this would be B one cell from the same worksheet. So in this case, I get this product, which would be this and QTY, which is basically that. So now I want to return both of those things. I want to do some sort of object and say some sort of property of this object, like product is product, which is this over here. And then QTY is QTY. Or maybe for this, we want to call it quantity. Is this QTY that comes from here. So this is what I want to return back. I basically want to return this object with two properties on it, product and quantity. Now, if I try to now go and check this, well, actually, let's just add some sort of console log so we can see what's going to happen here once we get the data or alert or something. And I'm just going to do data. And then I'm also going to do alert here, which is that error. Let's actually add something here and something here. So now let's go and test this and see what happens. So I'm going to reload this, click get now. I got success. And then I got this object, which is really that object that I'm getting from here. So now what I can do 
I can go here and instead of data, I can say data.product. And that should refer to this property here, which essentially is gonna be this apple. Let's just go back and reload this. There it is, apple. Maybe now we can get rid of this console log success and fail. And then the same way if I do quantity, if I go back and reload this, see I get 45. So now I can get both of those things within the same function as this object data. Let's try to take this to another level. So when we go back and try to return this product, let's actually try to grab another thing here. So we'll get product quantity and let's say in D1 cell, I'll enter type. And then when I return this here, I'm going to return within this quantity an object like this. And then within that object, actually, instead of quantity, let's just call this values. And then for quantity, we'll just do that QTY. And then for type, we'll do that type. So basically as values, I'm going to return this object with two things in it. So first let's go and enter something in D1. So now I got this, this, and this. So now if I wanted to get this quantity, I would have to do values quantity to get to it. So I'm gonna go here and do data.values.quantity like this. Save this, go back and refresh. And let's see what happens. I'm gonna click get now. So as you can see, I got 45. And if I do type, reload this, I got this. So far, so good. So now let's now go and change this type and enter a date. And then go back and reload this. And as you can see, I got nothing. It says cannot read properties of null, reading values. So what it was saying is that it couldn't read values of null, meaning this data was actually null meaning this entire thing returned was null instead of being this object. And what happened here is because we tried to have a date, it grabs this date as an object from the spreadsheet, and then it won't allow us to return that in this form. So how can we get around this? So what we can do, we can take this and we can basically convert it to a string so we can pass it to our front end. So I can stringify it like this. So basically we'll grab this data, we'll convert it to text format, and then we'll return it back. So at this point, if I go back, well, actually, let's just go back here and just alert the data so you can see what it looks like. And if I go back and reload this, click get now, I do get this. It gives me like product Apple values, all of this. But this is not JavaScript object right now. It's just string. Meaning that if I go here and do data.values.type, or whatever else we had, like quantity. Let's actually do quantity first. If I save this and go back and reload this and click get now, 
this is not going to work because we cannot do this on a string. See, it says cannot read properties of undefined quantity. Basically, when it does the values, it gives undefined on data because there's no such thing on this text. And then we got quantity. Now, in order for this to work, what we can do, we can take that data that comes back as a string and we can parse it to a JavaScript object. So I can just create something here. And then here, I'm going to take that parsed data and get to values and to quantity. So if I save this, go back and reload, I can click this and see I get that 45. So it works. And then if we just do type, which currently has a date in there, we get that value. Now, if we check what the type of this value is, save this, go back, refresh and run this, string. So that still is not a date right here. It's just string. So if you wanted to convert it to a date, you could create a date from it. like so. So I can save this, go back and reload. So now this is an actual date object, which means you could now do everything you would do on a JavaScript date object at this point. So you could save this in a variable and then do something like get full year. And if I go back and reload this, see, we can work with this date object now. So this is how you can pass data that Google will not allow you to pass by default, we can basically convert it in our back end to string, pass it to our front end, and in our front end, we can parse that and then work with it. And then that same logic can be used backwards. So if you wanted to pass some information from your front end to this get data function to your back end, you can still use that same logic. You can stringify here, make it a string, pass it to this function like get data. And then in your back end, when you receive that argument here, you can parse and use that data. And you're going to face this error sometimes. As you can see, I was giving you an example with dates, but it could also happen the other way around. So sometimes you actually pass some data from here to your back end and you end up having the same problem. You get that error message and it fails passing the data. So if that happens, you can again use this trick to use this conversion. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.